It's gonna be a test of wheels, man. They gonna test our will. Let's test their will. Yes, How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Hello, folks, and welcome to another edition of The Legacy. I'm your host, Doc Walker. Each week, we take a look at the rich history of Washington football. We go old school to the new with one thing in mind, and that is to win. And boy, did we hit the jackpot this week. It is my honor to introduce the captain, the hardest working man in show business from the linebacker position in NFL history, London Fletcher. Fletch, how you doing, man? Got me feel like James Brown, like I'm about to go go put on the show. <laughs> I watch you from afar as you on your way to earning world championship status with my old coach, Dick Vermeil. So anybody that has survived Coach Vermeil, I know is a true warrior. But your collegiate, your background is what was so compelling to me. Because I never understood how a man that ran 438 at the combine. Man who led the world in tackles. I don't care where you play. What you did, your body of work, and to not get drafted. Okay, you can now share this to the world. What did you do that we never knew about? <laughs> you know, um, my, my situation is very unique on how I even got into playing football. I was I was more of a basketball player. I was known as a basketball player. In Cleveland. State champion. No, state yeah, champion. It, it was a situation where... I wasn't really on the radar of a lot of football, uh, you know, scouts and things like that, and coaches, um, and even in college, because I only played one year of high school football. My dad, he was a he was a high school basketball player in Cleveland. He actually played for a school called Cleveland East, and their team went down to a to a state championship game. They lost. Um, so I kind of, you know, I grew up idolizing my dad. He didn't get an opportunity to go play in college. He went to work. Um, so basketball was my first love. I only played football my senior year because I didn't want to have any regrets. I was like, hey, I don't want to have any regrets. Played football my senior year. Was um, the MVP of, the, of our team. Had scholarship offers actually to play um, Division One college football. Um, Bowling Green, they, they, they recruited me in both basketball and football. Um, Northern Illinois, they were high on me in basketball. They said I can play football there. Um, Michigan and Ohio State, they bought both um, kind of wanted me to be a preferred walk-on. They had kind of already had their scholarships filled, but they're like, hey, you'll be preferred walk-on and you get a scholarship next year. But my heart was set on playing uh, basketball in college. I ended up taking a, a basketball scholarship to St. Francis in Pennsylvania. Then um, after a year and a half there, I transferred to Carroll and played football. But one of the kind of the misconceptions is, you know, I was like this kid that was a overachiever. But that's not the case. I was always one of the best athletes on the field, and, and, or, or the, whether it was football, basketball, whatever the case may be, when I was coming up, uh, I, was, I was always in great, a great athlete. I just um, I decided to go to uh, John Carroll Division Three school because of situations and circumstances back home in Cleveland. And then, you know, it's, it's tough to be an um, a undersized linebacker playing at a Division Three school, even though I had tremendous production for teams to, you know, take that, uh, that chance to say, I'm going to draft you and, you know, um, nobody was willing to pull the trigger. Had a lot of interest um, from some teams. I ended up running at four three at um, at actually Kent State's pro day, and um, you know I'm thinking I'm getting drafted. You on that fast? You, you're getting drafted, but didn't get drafted. And, um, went underdrafted, and you know came into the league very pissed off. When I saw you, and the way you practice, the way you approach the game, and the distinction you have, the hitting the number that most people don't get a chance to hit. And somebody says, well, what does 256 mean? I said, well, you don't hear a lot about it. But I guarantee you if certain people had accomplished it, we'd know about it. It'd be branded. Well, what is it? It's London Fletcher's consecutive game streak. Yeah. Availability is numero uno. How were you able to do this? You know, my um, circumstances growing up, um, like a lot of inner city uh, kids, we all have we all have a story. My story was not unique from a lot in terms of um, just drug abuse and within my family, um, crime, na crime ridden neighborhoods, um, you know, um, having to take care of my family. So really, as I look at it, I, Doc, I didn't have an opportunity or a choice to not succeed 
And um, once I got into the NFL, I was playing for so many other people um, and I was representing my family that, you know, uh, a sprained ankle, uh, uh, you know, uh, elbow injury, whatever, foot in things like that. Those weren't enough to keep me out of playing in the game because I had overcome so much to get into the National Football League that those things were, were not enough to keep me off the football field. So I was going to do whatever I needed to do um, to get myself ready to play a ball game. I was going to take care of myself, get my rest, um, work with my trainers, the doctors, team physicians, all the things um, and all the people who were going to help me get ready to play every single uh, game. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to be able to um, to do that my entire 16 year career. The Legacy is brought to you by Janet King. Let Janet King get your business back to business. Visit to schedule a disinfecting service today. D.C. has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. D.C.'s greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. Free health care. Hundreds to more than $1,000 per month in disability compensation and tens of thousands for college tuition. These are just some of the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs benefits that may be available to veterans. VA is focused on customer service like never before. Choose VA and see why veterans trust in VA reached an all-time high. Claim the benefits you've earned at choose.va.gov. When was the last time you experienced something different? D.C. has a home for the greatest hits of all time. That would be Michael Jackson for me. D.C.'s greatest hits. Madonna. Billy Idol. Live here. Cindy Lauper. Bon Jovi. 94.7. Blondie. The Eagles. The Drive. All we got is this moment that we're in right here, right now, man. Let's have fun for the man next to you, man. Let's go ahead and play for each other, man. You played for Big Vermeer. I was 19, and I, it was to the brink of exhaustion and where I thought... I, I, don't, I can't walk off the field. How in the world did you survive, Coach, as a grown man? <laughs> you know, it's it's funny, Doctor, that we share. Uh, you know, Dick Vermeil is our former head coach, and you know, the uh, when I got to the Rams, Dick Vermeil was in his second year taking over that program, and we would have two uh, two day practices, and these were the longest practices I'd ever been a part of. They were three three and a half hour practices. Um, both both practices, full pads. Full um, pads. We're in Macomb, Illinois. It's a it's it's always ninety five plus. The humidity is over hundred degrees. You had guys literally passing out on the football field. IVs. You know, you're getting 10, 12 guys getting IVs in, in training camp. They were so bad that guys were talking about revolting. They literally had a team meeting where it was like, man, we did. We <laughs> we can't take this. We're we're gonna revolt. Um, for me, I'm looking at it like I, I don't, I don't have a choice. If coach want to practice all day, I'm practicing. So I, you know, those veteran guys, they, they like, man, I'm tired, my legs, I don't have any energy. I'm looking at it like, man, it's my only shot. So I, I, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. They want to practice all day, I'm practicing. But looking back, those were the most brutal training camp practices and training camps I've ever been a part of. The inside drill. Oh, yeah. That's a Dick Vermeil oh. specialty. Oh, yeah. Now, you you were uh, unfortunate. You were in it. I wasn't. I got to watch it. Because oh, it, yeah. it just was the two guards, the center, the yeah. nose tackle, and the two linebackers. The fullback and the back and the quarterback. Oh, yeah. He taught us that the core of our team was going to be in the middle. Oh, yeah. If anybody was in the middle of our unit was going to be the toughest you know what's on earth. And the rest of us got to watch this. Ooh. And we had Mike Horton and Phil uh, uh, McKinley, the, the huge corporation. You know, we got Randy Cross. We got all these studs out there. And them linebackers, man, I'm telling you what, it was the most violent thing I'd ever seen in my life. 
Oh, and, oh, oh. and he set the tone with that, and you was in every one of those. Doc, you bringing back memories, man. Look, listen, those, those, uh, and this would be before the 907. Oh, yeah. I, I actually made a name for myself. We were the inside drill. We, we had a, a rookie guard that was, I think, drafted third round my year. Mm-hmm. And they run a little like a pool. Right. And man, I hit him like a, a runaway semi truck. I mean, I knocked him two, three yards in the backfield. And, and when I did that, Coach Mill was like, oh, this guy, <laughs> he, he has what it takes. But, I, you know, you talk about building your team the right way, and that's what Coach was all about. Um, and, and Coach Gibbs was like this, too. There was going to be a, t- a physical toughness about a team. Um, we were gonna, we, he was going to build up those calluses, and we did it in training camp. And that was every day. Those inside drills where you you go into that pit, you got butterflies in your stomach uh, before the snap of the ball. But then once that once that ball is snapped, it's like, oh, I'm I'm coming to get somebody. I loved it. But also would go every year the Pro Bowl thing would come out and they go alternate runner up. Going, what are they talking about? Not once, not twice, but eleven times. Yet it never altered your game. And then when you do break through, you bust through like gangbusters. Now they got to make you the player of the year everything that's accompanied with all of that. Yes. And all of this equals up, and I said the same thing to Brian Mitchell. All of this equals up, but wait a minute. He did everything the ones you consider to be great has done, and some, and led the league in almost every category. Why not the gold jacket? You know, it's, um, that's the great question, because when you, when you look at my numbers and uh, Brian Mitchell's numbers, um, we put we performed at a level that the greatest of all time has led. Um, yeah. Performed at, and I saw where um with Brian Mitchell and um and Jerry Rice, he only tri- uh, uh, trailed One Jerry Rice and, and um all, and all jars. When you compare me, you compare me to arguably the greatest middle linebacker to ever play the game, and Ray Lewis. My numbers and Rays are almost identical. Now Ray, I'm not just talking about a a guy who was a borderline uh, Hall of Fame. No, he was a first ballot considered on the route, route must, uh, Mount Rushmore of linebackers. Right. My numbers and his compared to, compared to each other. But I think it's part, uh, part of it is um, how you enter the league, you know, undrafted, he's first rounder. And I'm not just talking about Ray, but just um, I'm coming from a Division three school. Where you play at, playing in St. Louis and Buffalo, smaller markets, it's tough to get noticed. If I had played my entire career in Washington, there is no doubt I would have had uh, double-digit Pro Bowl career, Pro Bowls in my career. Um, being in that big, uh, big market, playing in the NFC East, playing, playing in a lot of national games, I didn't all of a sudden become a better player once I got to DC. I was always doing those types of things. Mm-hmm. It was just now it's on a bigger stage, and I'm not overshadowed by you know the greatest show on turf offense when I'm in St. Louis or in Buffalo. You're kind of in purgatory. Nobody knows what you're doing all the time. So. Once I got into D.C. and people recognized and saw, like, man, this guy has done this all the time. Then I started making the Pro Bowls. But it definitely is, um, you know, a situation where I should have had way more Pro Bowls, way more All Pros. And, uh, you know, um, the fact that I don't have a gold jacket, even the fact that I didn't, I've been uh, eligible now for, for uh, three years on the ballot. I've, I've been um, in the first cut. And I haven't even made it to the cut of 25. That's that's disrespectful. That's you know blatant disrespect. I was disrespected, you know, while I played with Pro Bowls and All Pros, and now I look at it as being disrespected by the Hall of Fame voters by not even ascending to a being a semi semifinalist with the numbers that I produced. I mean, my numbers are crazy. It's, it's, oh, no, there's no, no other way to look at it. And yeah, the only yeah. thing people can say or not can say, well, you only have four Pro Bowls. You're asking the wrong question. The question should be, why do I only have four Pro Bowls? Why do I only have two two All Pros? With the numbers that I produce, it's it's ridiculous. Another category that you were number one in, and uh, a sideline reporter, uh, we all get to vote on this, and that is the pregame hype uh, (laughs) chat, and also how you would waste yourself, your pregame meal on every, on the field, every game. And I chronicled this because I said, there's no way he can do this every game. I was wrong. You did it every game. 
What was it like once you got off out your car or the team bus and you walked in that locker room? Because from the moment you walked in that joint, things were different. Well, it it, it started even before I got to the locker room. Um, you know, once I got in my car or I got on that team bus, I say once I got dressed for for the game on Sunday, my mentality changed. I, I don't want to I don't want to have a ton of conversation. Um, you know, don't really want to talk to a lot of people. So in my mind, I'm kind of getting myself geared up and putting myself in a place where I need to be to go out and perform. You know, I'm a gladiator on Sundays. So if I'm coming into the stadium, I'm, I'm there are things that are pissing me off as I go, you know, come into our stadium. I'm just, just the way I was wired up. And once I um, got on that field and I strapped on that helmet and we're getting ready to come out that tunnel, man, it is on. I am I am a different guy, um, and all that energy and this stuff that I've put into getting ready to play that game. Sometimes it had to come out of <laughs> sometimes. Uh, every sometimes day. you <laughs> every mean day. every time, London. I never saw you not do it. I I, I did it every single game, uh, and I tried to do it before the uh, the kickoff. There was a couple times where I didn't time it out perfectly, and I didn't feel right. But it was it was every single game. Man. The Legacy is presented by your local Nissan dealers. Everything in our garage is inspired by our racing spirit. Racing for a great deal on the Honda Civic Sedan only at the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event. We all know things are different. Keeping you safe is not. At Innova, we ensure the safety of everyone who comes to us with safe locations, safe supplies, safe cleaning, and safe practices. You're safe at Innova. Get the facts at innova.org safety. Our new house is amazing. Great street, huge yard. There is a bit of an issue with our neighbor's fencing. <laughs> At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Which helps us save even more. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Peter. Push it. Ah. Hey. I'm down. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. At Inova, COVID-19 testing of all patients having a procedure or surgery, continuous training of our team members, and thorough cleaning of our facilities are just some of the many ways we work to keep you safe. You're safe at Inova. I said at the beginning of the year, this is a special football team. Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Do you still believe? Your goals have got to be lofty. And I wonder, what's left? What, do you, what does London Fletcher do right now to fulfill that rage and that anticipation for conquest? You know, um, Doc, I got, I got three young children, I'm so I'm pouring into them. I got a boy who's, uh, this will be his first year playing tackle football, so, you know, getting him ready to play. But um, there's so much more I have left to give um, from a football standpoint, from a knowledge standpoint. Um, and, you know, from a giving back to the organization, really, and uh, to Washington, um, you know, to, the, to, um, to our football team. Um, I'm always available to them. You know, anytime they've reached out to me, um, either to address the team, to do something, whether it's, you know, uh, narrating a, a, a hype video or even some of the guys have, have reached out to me. I'm always available. It's, it's funny because um, I've even had, you know, linebackers, all pro linebackers and pro bowl linebackers for other teams that reach out to me. And I'm I'm always willing to share share my knowledge. But, you know, needless to say, I'm a little I'm very biased to the burgundy and gold. Um, you know, I love what the uh, the direction of the organization and and um, you know what Jason is doing on the business side, what Coach Rich Fair is doing on the football side. Um, you know, seeing you know what what Tim uh, Hightower is doing with the alumni. And, you know, the alumni we we will be. I anticipate us being more involved and being around more. So, you know, I'm I'm there, re ready, willing, and able to serve in whatever capacity. Um, you know, um, you know, just uh, just give me a call. <laughs> well, my friend, uh, it's an honor. I I'm privileged that you would take time out. For Stevie, you know, uh, and Kyle and myself here on The Legacy because love your work. I, I still do believe the best is yet to come. You know, as um, Willie Jolly 
has made famous. And, and, and I believe that, man. Love your passion because it is infectious. It really is. People can't be around you and not be pumped up about the game of football. And it's being played the right way, even in this rules-conscious society that we're in right now. They can't kill the game. And uh, I just love you, man, for everything that you do. And thank you for joining us. All right, man. Love you, too. I appreciate it. Good deal. Nothing but the best for you, folks. That's going to do it for this week's edition of The Legacy. For Stevie and for Kyle, DOC, we'll do it again next week. God bless.